Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Why is it so important to get your self-confidence back after you've been in a toxic relationship? And why is it so vital to your healing? The reason is, is because the relationship itself has just probably whittled away at your confidence in your ability to trust your gut instincts, um, maybe your feelings about yourself and your physical body, your, your feelings of self-confidence in your attractiveness. All of those things get worn away and whittled down when you're in a toxic relationship. So even if you're, you were in a toxic relationship that didn't involve being uh, in a relationship with a narcissist, those still can still can and do happen in your typical toxic relationship. But then if you add in the narcissist, you can times that by like a thousand, a million, you know what I mean? Like it's just so much more toxic and um, just crumbling of your self-confidence and self-esteem, right? It's just, <coughs> excuse me. So the thing is, is that it's so extreme that you come out of it just being, you know, a hollowed out version of your former self. And so how do you get that confidence back? The confidence comes back from reconnecting to your essence, to your core, to your true self, that person that's still in there, that was there before this toxic relationship started to chip away at all of that confidence and um, feeling of worth, right? So <clears throat> that's a healing process. There's a journey that needs to be taken and there's time and space that's needed for that journey to happen, right? So it's really important that you take that time and that you don't just jump into another relationship. And that's easy to do, right? Like it's totally understandable and natural that we would gravitate towards someone else, especially if that other person seems to exhibit some of the characteristics that we're missing in the toxic relationship. <clears throat> the thing to consider though, is that if we're going from one toxic relationship into another relationship too quickly without doing that healing in between and without really truly reconnecting with ourselves, the person that's going into this new relationship is still wounded and is still very, very vulnerable and can be very easily manipulated. And so, and this isn't to victim blame or victim shame, it's to recognize that you're in a place where other people can then take advantage of you. So if you're going from one toxic relationship and you're out in the dating world, even if you weren't in a relationship with a narcissist and maybe you don't recognize the signs, but the narcissist is looking for that person who is feeling unsure about themselves, is feeling lack of confidence in their body, in their, in their very existence, right? Those are the people that a narcissist is going to look for for their narcissistic supply, right? So <clears throat> without doing that work to heal yourself and to regain your footing where you know what you want, where you're very clear about your boundaries, you're open to other people. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got a little frog in my throat. I'm going to take a drink. But you're open to other people using that as a way of manipulating you. So what a, what a narcissist will do is they'll find out any vulnerabilities you have. So even if you feel like you've done a lot of healing, so because I want to be clear, narcissists can find, um, you know, narcissistic supply in just about anyone. So it's very important that we don't just say, hey, they're looking for the wounded people or that there was something, you know, broken about you and that's why the narcissist was able to take advantage. It's not just that, right? It's not that. So you know, to be clear, you can have done all kinds of work on yourself and feel very confident 
and a narcissist will still find ways to find out your vulnerabilities, right? So early on in the relationship, they're going to be very attentive. They're going to be, they're going to be seemingly very vulnerable themselves in order to draw out information from you. And so even though you might have done a ton of healing, if there's anything left, it, and I mean, there always is, right? Let's face it, we're human beings, we're, you know, we're imperfect, and we're, we're all on a journey of, you know, evolution, right? Whether we want to be or not, we're always evolving. Um, and whether we're fighting it or not, we're still evolving. So, you know, it's pretty easy to find vulnerabilities in people. And especially because in a romantic relationship, you're sharing these vulnerabilities in the context of wanting to deepen connection, right? So you might be, um, you know, sharing these vulnerable pieces of yourself that maybe still need some nurturance and healing and safety. And the narcissist is going to hear those things and, and kind of put them away for later. And so then once they've drawn you in, they'll weaponize those things and, and they'll come back at you with them in a way that is going to cause you so much more harm. And so that's the importance of healing from a toxic relationship. That's the importance of reclaiming and reconnecting to yourself and getting that true sense of self-love that fuels self-confidence right because there's there's bravado and there's sort of you know putting on a mask of confidence that you know sometimes we have to do those things in certain you know aspects of our life i know certainly when i first started coming on to do these lives and i look back at some of my um first early attempts and they're just they're so crunchy. They're so terrible. Um, and probably there's some crunchiness and terribleness about these videos as well. Um, but I've evolved and I've grown. But at first, I had to sort of wear this mask of like, you know, I have no problem speaking in front of potentially, hopefully, a lot and a lot of people. I'm not going to say thousands. I mean, that would be great. But, you know, the reach that we can have through social media can be really great. And so that's a little bit scary, um, while at the same time being very exciting. And, um, and, and there, you know, and rewarding, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I pushed through that. And I sort of had to pretend that I was okay and that, my, that I didn't have butterflies in my stomach and that I wasn't feeling like a tightness in my chest and that I wasn't, you know, worried that I was going to stumble and stutter and um and ah too much. And I do all of those things all the time now. And I just, I don't care. And so the mask is off in that this is who I am. And I'm sharing this part of myself and my own journey, as well as, um, you know, some hopefully some wisdom and some and some truth to you so that you're you're recognizing that authenticity brings a certain self-confidence so that even in our our weirdness, my geekiness, um, my awkwardness, um, even in all of that, I still feel self-confident in being out here in this way talking to you all because I feel that there's, there's a sense of purpose in me in doing this. And, um, and so from that, it, that fuels my self-confidence, but there's also uh, now this underlying sense of self-worth that I didn't have a few years ago, right? So it's not like I've always been able to speak in front of a lot of people. And in fact, 
I think if you were to say to me, hey, um, we have an auditorium filled with thousands of people and we want you to come speak, that for me would be another kind of like, Ooh, oh, I'm going to have to do some work around that, right? Because that would be really uncomfortable and vulnerable for me. So it's always a journey. There's always life throwing things at you and testing your resilience and your confidence. And the way that we become more confident is to really, truly love ourselves. And in order to do that, that takes work. It doesn't necessarily, like there's no magic pill to that. There's no, you know, snapping your fingers. I don't have the magic wand. But what I do have is a way of working with people where we sit and create space for you to explore and to kind of go through all those layers. And, you know, everyone's got different layers and, and different amounts of layers, baggage, whatever you want to call it, uh, wounding, um, you know, trauma. We all have different aspects of that within us. It's about finding those parts and really attuning to them, get, connecting to them and giving yourself what you need most in order to integrate those parts so that you become whole or more whole and so that you're able to then love all of those parts. And that's where shadow work comes in. That's where, you know, doing that deep dive into maybe possibly generational trauma, developmental trauma, you know, lots of things can come up, right? So, um, and it's different for every person. And that's why the sessions look completely different from one person to the next and even from one session to the next if we do more than one session. So, yeah, so I just, I, I really want to say that the self-confidence piece to healing is the self-love and that's the true healing. So in order to sort of move into a space where you can go out into the world, maybe maybe back into the dating world if you're single and, and know your worth and be able to find the green flags in the people that you meet and, and see if that reson if they resonate with you as being you know s the same or similar like as far as you know morals and values and and how they treat themselves and what boundaries they have for themselves that are healthy like all of those things become much more readily accessible and knowable and seeable when we have that sense of deep self-love so if that's something that you're feeling like you're lacking, then I hope that you can feel free to reach out to me. We can have a chat. Um, you know, feel free to go over and check out my YouTube channel. I've got a bunch of videos there. Often my lives go over to YouTube. So if there's some that you maybe missed because you're new to my Facebook page, um, there's old lives over there that you can check out plus some other stuff that I share on you know different techniques for calming anxiety and you know getting more in touch with yourself becoming more grounded um, and becoming more intentional so all of that's over there I also have stuff on TikTok that you can check out if you like those shorter little videos um, and so yeah I'm, I'm in a few different places and of course I'm always available through private message so feel free to reach out thank you and have a great rest of your day namaste